Hey everybody, it's the Sage Valentine, and this is my review of the following. Season 2, Episode 11, Freedom, 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 you got the gift for what you take. What is the price of freedom in this episode? Ladies and gentlemen, may I say that out of all the episodes this season, this one is my favorite. I'm sure there'll be other episodes that I will love as well, but this one here is my absolute favorite, so let's get to it. Your commitment greatly moves me, says Joe Carroll to the masses after the aftermath of the massacre, whereas the gentleman and Emily Kinney from uh, The Walking Dead were both murdered in that um, restaurant. It was time for part two of instruction. And in this part two, a lovely lady named Angela volunteers. I wouldn't have been the first to volunteer, but you go ahead, Angela. Do you. So he tells her to tell a happy moment, and she talks about diving in the water in the beautiful blue, and it was clear, and we were in the Florida Keys with my fiancé, and, and I felt like flying. It was freedom, and Joe took the word freedom and said, you can give freedom to the world, pulls back a sheet, and reveals Carla. Now, for those who are like, who the heck is Carla? Remember last episode? Remember the girl who said, this is not what we did in Corbin? That's the one who was laid out on the slab. And in order to give Carla freedom, Angela had to stab Carla in the stomach under her red American Apparel tank top. How do I know it's American Apparel? Used to work there, and it seems like these shows use all their colors and all their colorful things for that. So, American Apparel. Mandy's unnerved by it. Emma notices. I don't know why they're so surprised that Mandy's not into this. Mandy's still young, and all Mandy did, her first kill was killing her mother. That was it. She really hasn't killed too many people. He tells Angela, you are not taking a life. You are freeing a soul. This completely contradicts everything Joe Carroll said in last season about how he, the whole Edgar Allan Poe thing, like he's really into this religious thing. Ryan's having sex with Carrie Cook. You, if you're just tuning in, I don't like Carrie Cook. If you've been here, you guys all know. I don't like her. I think she's a follower. Plain and simple. I've been saying that since she wrote the book. And the book came out and everyone found out about the book and she was on TV and she's the only one who survived that massacre in the bookstore. She's suspect. So apparently these kids, because... The millennial generation that I'm a part of, we love swag with the t-shirts and the masks and the, the buttons and the things with Joe Carroll's face on it. And one girl's having a party and she's honoring Joe Carroll. I don't know why that's a good idea, but hey, do you. So, <laughs> apparently this is the whole thing for Carrie and Ryan, you know, have sex and... It seems like every woman who has sex with Ryan has a, basically, it's a, it's a death sentence, save for Claire, who we now know is alive, but she damn near almost died from having sex with Ryan. Mike comes to visit, and um, he sees Carrie. He's not feeling Carrie, so we're liking that. He said he and Max researched, and they found 73 religious cults. So they're trying to break it all down to find out exactly what group does Joe Carroll have control over. We know it's Corbin. Claire is sitting there watching the news. She wants to leave. She's ready to go. She's trying to convince them, you know, to let her go see Ryan because she can help him. They're trying to make her stay, but she's not changing her mind. I just hope this is not a death wish for her. If Joe finds out in any way, because Joe has eyes everywhere, if he finds out, she's a goner. So they said they're going to move Joey and her mother to a uh, military base to take them away from the whole thing, and she can't see them unless she joins Witsec, if she's able to get back in Witsec, because if Lily Gray finds out about her, she's dead. If Joe Carroll's people find out about her, especially Emma, dead either way. So, um, they think, well, the authorities think that Lily is in a country without extradition. Mike's worried about Claire leaving Witsec when he's sitting there talking to, um, Ryan, but he can't tell him. 
exactly what's going on but he you can tell like it's on his lips like i really want to tell him ryan likes carrie but he feels like he misjudged her no sweetie you didn't a van pulls up to this bakery it's like a religious one i think it might be greek orthodox i'm just saying because there was a crucifix on the wall so maybe it was greek orthodox but anyway um it could be like a greek bakery something like that um, a van pulls up to the bakery, like I said, some men with masks, with like these white masks, the same white masks they had from last episode, and knives, they walk in, start cutting and stabbing and stabbing and stabbing, and save for a few people, particularly this older black dude, takes off out the door, and he's out with this other person, and they're out. Um, we find out that there's five dead and twelve injured. The five dead were apparently people who worked in the store, and then there were twelve people who were injured. But there was no message from Joe, which is a head scratcher for them, because every time Joe does something, there's something there. And these last, you know, murders, the writing was on the wall in blood, so... Mandy overhears Emma and Joe talking about how she's a lost cause. Now, I'm not sure why they didn't realize she's listening in to this whole thing and she can kind of hear this but they're getting a little too lax with this whole thing they're doing at Corbin. Um, Robert walks up and questions why Carla was killed. He is questioning Joe's motives and Joe says they're on a mission to spread you know to save the world. A special mission you know to save the world. Side note a lot of people at Corbin are upset because Mandy wasn't put away with the rest of the um, non-believers. We know why Mandy was put away. That That's Joe Carroll's little sweet eye to bean on the other side. That's his little piece of chocolate right on the side. So just in case Emma dies, he can groom that little one and she can become his side piece. I'm just saying this. So Joe says, now we have a problem since Robert is questioning. We have to hold him close. So we see this woman. She's like a nurse. She's walking to her car, not paying attention. Now, this is not a real New Yorker because she'd be looking around, but you know me. I keep going in like real New Yorker versus fake one. Yeah, it's a show, I know. So somebody comes up behind and says, are you such and such? And stabs her and kills her, pushes her in the backseat of her car, puts a blanket over her, and then steals her hospital ID and just goes on and drives away. So um, Joe Carroll tells em Emma to make sure that Robert believes and stays put. So what does Emma do that she does best? Emma gets him in the bed, basically. Touch my heart and feel my heart. I was like, yeah, that's what you want him to feel. And next thing you know, it's all the huffing and puffing and everything else. And believe in me. Right, Emma. Mandy goes into Joe's office. She finds a, a computer. She sees an ad for a lost heart-shaped purse. I remember that. But until the end of the episode, it takes me a while to finally remember exactly what that is. But I do remember that message from the beginning of the season. And when I remembered it the last time, I think it had to do with Lily and Mark, I think. Which it plays itself out in this episode, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The hospital is filled with victims. It's a madhouse. Two men fake. Like, they are basically victims. And they have, like, these shallow wounds. They get up, they disappear. Meanwhile, that nurse, even before that, that nurse, she comes in. She has this duffel bag. She puts the duffel bag in the real nurse's locker. And then she goes off, does what she has to do. Those two fake guys run in. They get the suitcase. They go on about their business. They pull out the guns and everything. So the two victims, they can, like I said, before they got out, I should say, before they got out of the bed and got the guns, they were, like, texting each other, which was weird. Um, and they're loading up the rifles after which. Um, the fake nurse goes to see Luke and gives him a phone, and it's his mother talking, saying, do everything that she says, and just get yourself out of this. So basically, we learn that the whole stabbing in that bakery was a catalyst to basically break out Luke. So she's trying to, you know, second guess or step up to Joe Carroll in some way, shape, or form. So, um, it's the whole plan is basically to get Luke out of the hospital like he needs to be out. I think, I thought we were done with the craziness of the International House of Crazies, as Joe calls them, but... Nope, it's still open, still making crazy pancakes. So Ryan and Mike are racing to the um, hospital when they realize what's going on. They realize something's weird. And that's the same hospital where all the victims are. It's the same place where 
Luke has it just, Luke is it just so happened. So, the fake, um, so, um, the fake nurse puts a gas mask on. I think she gives it to Luke, but Luke doesn't take it. So, the two fake guys fake like they're an orderly and a patient. They roll through on that floor. How they get through there when it's supposed to be locked, I don't even know. But they're pushing all through, getting through there. Well, somebody questions the fact that they're there. And one guy puts his hands up. Then the other guy pulls out the gun. They just start shooting everybody. And this poor nurse hits the deck. There's only one FBI guy. And he's, like, looking through the fog, looking through the fog. So, SWAT rolls in there like a couple floors down, so they're way behind. So, they, I guess, um, the two, f the fake orderly, the fake victims, and the fake nurse and Luke, they're on their way out. So, the nurse jumps up when the SWAT team comes out, and she's like, they're trying to make an escape of the ambulance. Like, she was, like, afraid, like, they were going to shoot her. Personally, I'd have been afraid, too. She was, like, up and screaming. So, um... They're still in the hospital. Ryan and Mike split up. And I'm like, didn't y'all know? You guys don't... I said, every time you two split up, something crazy happens. So Ryan, on his journey, sees blood in the stairway, and he follows it to the basement. Mike notices there's this weird, sketchy kind of nurse. But he's, like, checking the um, IDs. And she refuses you know, to show him his ID. And then she pushes him, and they battle, and he pushes her, and this... Thank God this one SWAT guy is there and he shoots the crap out of her. She pulls out this knife. I'm like, she really made a gun for him so she wouldn't have to, like, a, a running start towards him with the knife so she wouldn't have to say anything. She wasn't going to say anything anyway. She just died for the cause. How did Lily and Joe find these people that die for this cause? Like, to them, life is not precious so long as Lily and Joe's little, um plans go into fruition or they do their part then they take themselves out that's a good question i just asked how do they get these suicide people kind of carrie is messing ryan up and i believe that's his that's her purpose because ryan's usually one step ahead of all this and ryan's so behind and i'm like ryan ryan mm -mm. So Joe's sitting on his bed. He's listening to this televangelist who's saying that, you know, Joe is a bad guy, such and such. If you recognize the televangelist, that's Tom Cavanaugh, a.k.a. Ed, from that show on NBC called Ed. That's him. I guess he's another part. So first we had Sprague Graydon. Now we have Tom Cavanaugh. They're just pulling up these 90s references. I can't wait to see who else is going to be on here before the season ends. Um, Emma's talking to Joe, and she's like, upset with him because she feels like you know he's kind of sitting back and he's not really making a move and she's like these people look to us for guidance joe makes a comment that ends in something like they want to live in infamy so joe is on his delusions of grandeur so i guess this whole idea he has is not going to go through but we're just going to see a whole bunch of crazy until finally this whole thing fails and ryan and the crew catch up so joe's little mistake he claims was small talking about Edgar Allan Poe and the Poe Mass, which I thought was pretty nice. So apparently whoever writes this show was an English major in some way because you'll know that our, I wouldn't call it disdain, but they put Edgar Allan Poe down your throat when you're an English major of any kind. You gotta know Poe, either way. So he said, more people die in the name of religion. It's about blood and sacrifice. Now he quotes the book of Matthew, where Jesus said, he had a whole long quote, but the part that I quote was, I came to set a man against... Man against father and daughter against mother. I'm sure that's in the Bible, but I'm sure he's interpreting it incorrectly. But knowing Joe Carroll, he takes what he likes. And like he said, it's all about blood and sacrifice. That's his whole thing this year. I can't wait to figure out what he's going to do in season three because they were already renewed for season three. Can't wait. But I'm sidetracking. Ryan is in the basement. Um, meanwhile, Joe sees Mandy. Mandy's standing there. She's just looking at him weird like. And he's looking at her, but he just ignores her. And I was like, wrong move. Wrong move. So Joe sees, um, like I said, Ryan's in the basement. He, he sees Luke, and Luke is like with this guy, and they're headed to the marketplace. And that's what he's telling. No. Ryan's in the basement, and he, like, the walkie-talkie goes off. And I'm like, damn, they gave away his coordinates where he is. But he tells him that. Luke and that guy are on their way to the um, marketplace, which I guess they're underground, so they're able to, I guess it's connected to the hospital. So, 
Ryan sees Luke sitting in his room talking to him, and the guy comes, the guy that's the fake orderly, comes up behind him with a gun, puts it to his head. Ryan offers to help the guy out. He's like, just give Luke to me, and you can walk with this dude. Is yet another suicide, ride or die type person. So he's like, screw this. Ryan takes the dude down. And then he shoots him and he kills him. Meanwhile, Luke's hop along Cassidy and he's limping on his way out through the market. Ryan's running, but then he's, I guess he's upset because he didn't catch Luke because he sees, but he finds that phone that Lily Gray used, you know, contact Luke. But Carrie Cook has you off your game. And funny how when they're going through the crime scene, who shows up but Carrie Cook? Now, if you're supposed to be doing broadcast, why are you all up under Ryan? I'm a conspiracy theory chick till the day I die from here to Kalamazoo. But why the hell does she keep coming up and popping up like coincidences? Uh-uh. No way. This is not a coincidence. I'm like, mm, mm She claims she's worried. I said, right. That's what Joe Carroll or Lily Gray told you to do. One of them, she's with more than likely Joe, but if she's with Lily, I'll laugh too. She's with somebody. Mark and Luke, they meet up. It's just this gorgeous, beautiful moment of, oh, I missed you. Ooh, and they hug and hug. And it would be pretty, you know, sad and somber if this wasn't the International um, House of Crazies. And they weren't killers. They have this family group hug and they're crying. Joe's watching the news again. I don't know what this is with Joe watching the news. Because I don't remember Micah really looking at the news like that. But, hey. So, um, Lily Gray made a play. And he says, ooh, you clever little viper. We'll show her. So, like I said, Lily's pulling something to outdo Joe. It's a whole seesaw Marjorie Paul thing going on between these two. Like, who can outdo the other one? So Mike worries about them going against um, Lily with all her resources, with little regard for, when she has little regard for life. After this is over, because I think he, he also focuses, you know, about the part about how um, she killed his father and the father had nothing to do with it. So that's where she, he gets, you know, her little regard for life. And Ryan says, after this is over, we'll have a life in the universe owes us. I said, the universe doesn't owe you anything, Ryan. And you know damn well somebody else is going to pop up alongside uh, Joe Carroll should Lily Gray die. Or she may get away. And we may get a third adversary towards Ryan Hardy that's trying to outdo Joe. One of the two. Well, what I forgot to mention before I end this video was that after Joe was looking at Mandy, Mandy disappeared into her room. Because, like I said, she um, went on the internet in his office, which I don't know how he didn't notice that. And she put everything away, but Joe is so lost in his delusions of grandeur that, psh, please, whatever. So, Mandy goes to her room, she packs everything. Nobody notices Mandy's packing anything, nobody notices that she's gone now. If or she's leaving or she's gone now, if Micah was still the head of this or if Micah's wife, Julia, was still involved in this, somebody would have noticed. But these are the little tiny mistakes that Joe Carroll keeps making that in the end of the season is going to come back to bite him right in the ass. And he's nearly going to get caught this time. So Mandy hitchhikes and she finds a girl, like a car pulls up. And I'm thinking, damn, it's one of those people from Corbin. Is it Joe Carroll's people? Like she's in a whole lot of trouble. But it's a lady, and she gets in the car with the lady, and she says, you have a phone? She picks up the phone, and she calls Mark. And they're all so surprised that she calls him. Meanwhile, Ryan is at the apartment, his apartment with um, Mike, because I think Max is probably out still doing some digging. And the, there's a knock on the door, and the head of WITSEC, Witness Protection, um, walks in and he says, we're the head of witness protection. We have either, he said, we have somebody to see you or someone wants to talk to you. He comes in and who does Ryan see but Claire? So this will mark the end of Ryan and his main squeeze, Carrie. Unless, just like season one, 
Carrie, as I've been saying through this video and through other videos, Carrie is a plant and she's designed to kill off Claire because Joe has a follower in Witsec who's been giving him information over the internet. Things that make you go, hmm. Side note, the mal the song that was playing at the end was um, by a group called The Malpractice. It was called The Amazon Pull. So, to end this lovely video, all I can say is by the end of this season, either Lily Gray and her international house of crazies will be dead, or we will get a third adversary popping up to appear and smile and wave and cause all sorts of chaos for season three. Joe Carroll and Ryan are eventually going to meet. And from the looks of that trailer for next week's episode, a little sneak peek, Mandy got herself in a sticky situation. And some other craziness is about to ensue. So I'm all here for it, as I said. It's episode 11. I'm good. I've been down since January. I'm good, and I'm probably more than likely... Once this show ends and the rest start, I'm going to go back in and do season one for you guys because I love season one. Thank you so much for tuning in every week. Thanks for watching my videos. Just thanks. And if you guys want to chat, check me out on Twitter. Definitely check my page for my links. I believe my blogs are up there. Um, the truth is, you know, and um, I hope you can handle it. Um, I'm also on Tumblr, A Thousand Heartbeats. If you want to say hey, like I said, contact me, say hey. Do you guys have any anything to add to what I said? And am I too far off? Or what is your prediction for the rest of this season? Because apparently the season ends at the end of April because 24 is coming back. So definitely let me know. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Glad you're here. And uh, have a happy Monday. And stay tuned for my reviews of The Walking Dead. I believe... Survivor, and Hannibal. Because unfortunately, The Walking Dead is gone, so after that I'm finding something else to review. So, happy Monday, everybody. Take care. Have a kick-ass week, and bye, guys. Bye. <laughs>